Hello, um, today I'm going to be talking about the Neolithic, the Neolithic Revolution for my AP World History exam review. So let's jump right in. So first we need to find basically what is the Neolithic Revolution. It was, it was the development of agriculture um, then about 10, 12,000 years ago, and this was usually followed by the domestication of animals. So like some causes, like how and why this occurred. Well, the last ice age ended around this time, and it's caused many of the um, species of animals that humans relied on to go extinct. And so, uh, therefore, new sources of food were needed, and it's like, basically, there's no much traveled. And um, dealing with some of like, the grains or grasses, um, they must have dropped seeds in the soil and discovered that they would grow, and their culture was born. So like where and when did this happen? So uh, a great way to look at this is to zoom in on this map over here. So basically, uh, in, uh, around the Indus River Valley, um, you had uh, the Mohenjo-Daro and the Harappa civilizations. And the very first civilizations were in the, by the Tigris and the Euphrates in the Fertile Crescent, Mesopotamia. And then um, uh, over in the Huanghe, over here in China, you had... Um, uh, the Shang, Shang civilizations, and then in Mesoamerica, were the Olmecs, and then the Shavan and the Andes, of course. And uh, these things here again, uh, 12,000, 14,000 years ago, and these um, all started independently from each other. So it's kind of, um, it's, it's um, by historians, it's called a common phenomenon by historians that um, agriculture developed. And here's just an um, example of some early agriculturalists um, using these primitive tools to um, cut down some grain. And so basically, uh, the effects. The agricultural revolution, there are many new developments, lasting effects, so there are the rise of civilizations, like the ones I just went in in detail on the map that I explained. Uh, also, like the switch to agriculture, more reliable um, food supply led to increase in um, population, and they all started to settle together in sedentary settlements. Um, the effects of the first civilization, first civilization is in the, was in the Fertile Crescent. Um, domestication of animals, uh, this stemmed from like living together in settlements. Um, Animals um, were allowed were used for herding and assistance in farming, like pulling plows, and then pastoralist societies developed where um, uh, agriculture wasn't possible. So this was usually in the Eastern Hemisphere um, that, because you had to have domesticated animals, and those did, really didn't exist besides the, the llama in the Andes and over in uh, Central, over in um, Latin, uh, South America, pardon me. And uh, these, were, these were nomadic people who herded their animals around following uh, the pasture for these animals. And then environmental degradation. Degradation. This also um, resulted from the agricultural revolution, and uh, it had a massive. They had a massive impact on the environment through um, like burning um, areas of land to, to be crops and cultivate fields. Also, um, um, by cutting down trees to make room for these crops, deforestation, and um, like re by replacing the forest, um, it caused soil loss, floods, and water shortages. And then um, if they over aggressively farmed, it could lead to um, soil erosion. And then let's move on. And so here's a little comic showing like how these rise of civilizations, these people were settled down and these dogs cooked meat, wheels of chase, a fire to bask by, were done evolving. So it was pretty sweet if you were an um, animal or like a dog, you had a sweet setup, a nice place to live and sedentary civilizations that were caused by agriculture. So now we move on to like a scripted comparison. So I want to distinguish like how the Neolithic revolution was, was different and new from the Paleolithic era. The Paleolithic era was before, um, before like 10, 12,000 years ago when agriculture was first developed and it was mainly all had, they were only allowed to be like hunter gatherers and nomads. So it's a social structure, social structure, like Paleolithic, um, like I said, hunter gatherer tribes, stone age led to faster population growth. Um, it was basically egalitarian because there were, wasn't really specification. Um, of like duties or things and no like elites really had risen yet. Neolithic, um, more of this stratification began to happen as people were um, able to like define roles and settle down and uh, store and accumulate goods. So elites appeared and then uh, accumulation of wealth became more possible and then um, civilizations obviously developed. Culture, like Paleolithic, had uh, they lived in mobile tent like structures because they had to carry everything they had with them. So like um, much, much later on, like the Mongols developed yurts, so kind of like that, um, tent-like yurt structures, um, teepees, if you will. And then, um, there's art, like cave paintings, rock arts, clothing, animal skins from the animals that, um, killed. Um, then the mindset, like the wealth and, uh, land was shared because everyone lived off of it and they relied on it for their food, like gather, 
hunt the animals that lived on it and like um, any animal that killed that was killed by the tribe like the meat was shared and neolithic agriculturists agriculturalists um, lived in more permanent dwellings now they developed these from like straw stone straw and stone and mud i have a picture of this later to show um early civilizations um later on like egypt or mesopotamia they had a more um ag large architecture large scale like ziggurats pyramids and then the pastoralists developed. I said that or said this earlier. They they still had to use these mobile structures, but art took on more. Uh, took on a three D form like beads and pottery, and that was due to the development of the pottery wheel. But uh, now possession began to appeal. Like this is mine. I live here. This is uh, my property. Like these these are my animals. And then um, record keeping um, developed, or not not developed, but um they they arose in different areas independently, just like agriculture did. And they were like diffused with each other. Um, religion, so these both kind of share similarities. Um, so there's just one big section. So there wasn't really a set religion. There were like polo monotheistic belief systems, and these de depended on where you were and um, different worldviews on religion. Or um, people were trying to just explain, just explain like the natural world or the unexplained and many relations to like ancestors. But religious leaders like shamans still had high power. And uh, agriculture um, civilizations, Neolithic age, um, first began to bury their dead since they were sedentary, and they had certain, sorry, they began began to bury their dead in certain areas, allotted locations. But this was not possible for Paleolithic um, hunter gatherers as they moved along. And then um, um, Paleolithic um, was more like spiritual life, ritual stories and rituals, and they had shamans who um, they used like psychoactive drugs to enrich the spiritual experience. And then interactions between um, the civilizations like Paleolithic, um, they migrate all over the globe so looking for food, and they, it's where they developed spoken languages, and this is where they first like populated the earth. That was probably the biggest um, event until this agricultural revolution populating the earth. The Neolithic um, age, the ag agriculture independently popped up throughout the world, civilizations formed, but populations were um, able to increase due to this, and as uh, people living together, um, so people could specialize and didn't have to worry about finding their next meal. And then domestication of animals, um, it's already been covered in pastoralists. Um, and they, but pastoralists, um, spread like new weapons and modes of transportation that transform warfare, because as they went from place to place, um, as they were migratory um, civilization. And in politics, there were pretty, pretty primitive stuff, rather simple pol political aspects in Paleolithic, um, basically just around like the clan or the tribe. And uh, Neolithic began to, um, and politics intensified a little bit more, still organized due to like elders and elite, but um, stratification, subordination kind of helped um, add to this uh, factor of being an elite. Then um, early states were often led by a ruler with a source of power, was believed to be um, ruled based on divine right. This was seen in China later on also, like the mandate of heaven. Um, the technology Paleolithic just had extensive use of tools, like a spear, bow, knife, those were um, weapons, and like you could carry things and lift their garments from animals, um, digging sticks, poison arrows, ropes, nets, then they would use stone, animal bones, and wood to make these tools and weapons. Another interesting thing, pretty advanced for this time, but they used fire to clear the landscape so they could like uh, migrate more uh, easily. And then, um, the Neolithic, uh, obviously they discovered agriculture, and they just had the potter's wheel to help them make those pots to carry things. Um, animals are domesticated. The textiles developed, which um, helped um, more um, better types of clothing, woven clothing to develop, and irrigation to help the crops, and then um, metallurgy. So uh, you can make metal tools and early metal um, hose and plows and wheels uh, um, increased um, ability to um, move and also and also do work on the farm. So here's a here's a quick picture of some tools. So you have like um, grinding grain in the middle on this big stone. Um, they were able to grind the grain and uh, there's like hatchets and um, um, sickles for cutting down grain made off based off some primitive metal and just um, simple stuff. Let's keep going. Now, economy, which like uh, there was a very limited trade. They traded out of necessity to things they needed and didn't have necessarily available to them. Um, they bartered. Um, well, women really gathered, men hunted, but in the Neolithic, um, internal trade between villages increased, trading for things they needed based off um, like crop availability and like surplus began to develop in the sedentary lifestyle that helped with this. And then demography, 
um, Paleolithic, like shift in the Earth climate, Ice Age, and, um, and then environmental effects, like we said earlier, um, used fire through the land, and also that they sometimes hunted species to extinction. Um, they just, but they just had to follow their herds to, as a food source. Pardon, I gotta go back to that. Ne Neolithic, um, as Ice Age melted, development of um, agriculture, pastoral societies, and uh, environmental effects again, um, soil erosion, defore deforestation. But um, agriculture societies also increased uh, life expectancies due to the steady food supply. And then move on, and here's just a great picture to show um, domesticated animals here with this man walking with his, it's like a pet wolf, it's pretty sweet. Like over to the left of him is a sickle, and they're using sickles to cut down, like a scythe to cut down this grain. Primitive technology, it's by the water showing like, irrigation systems brought into the village. Um, and then over to the right, you can see like the straw huts and people's dwellings and um, women baking with like these tools and rolling, looks like maybe dough onto a, onto a flat plate. And then over back behind, people were doing work with these primitive tools and also you know, over there by the lake, you can see domesticated animals. Again, this would probably be used for milk or to do work on the farms. And that, that's it. That's my sources. And so that's basically it. So agriculture revolution was a pretty big event in history and one of the most important in our in the world history overall. And it really stuck out to me this year. It's just a very interesting event. Thank you.